Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, I made it, so that's good. Uh, I'll give a health update because I've been asked quite a bit, and thank you for all for reaching out and all your prayers and everything. So um, I'm allowed to be here according to my doctor because I haven't had a fever for however long she told me not to have a fever for. Um, <clears throat> but when I get asked how I'm doing, so I, I, I still get very short of breath and I'm very sleepy, and my brain does not think very clearly, so the sermon's gonna be awesome, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Um, but I will be doing the whole service from here, so I have something to lean on, because I just, I get fatigued and short of breath real quick. I also have asthma, so that's been a fun process. When it comes to communion this morning, uh, we will have communion. Um, I will not be serving it or touching it, just to make sure I don't get any of you sick, so I'll do the Consecration of the elements from over here, and then our elders will serve communion down at the steps uh, this morning. Um, that way we still get uh, the body and blood of Christ for our forgiveness, and that'll be great. But um, thank you for all your prayers. We have a lot of church members that are also sick and aren't able to be with us. We want to continue lifting them up in prayer. But I appreciate all of the encouraging words, the prayers, and all the uh, reaching out. So with that, though, we're going to worship Jesus this morning. We're going to celebrate the joy that he brings as being our Savior that we recognize and remember on Christmas Day. So as we begin our worship, I invite you to stand for opening hymn, Joy to the World. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. This time you're invited to kneel, sit, or stand for a time of silent reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand together for the reading of the Psalm of the Day, which comes from Psalm chapter 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, as for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break with them a heart of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. You may be seated.
Please stand for the Kyrie and the prayer of the day. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 14. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The uh, second reading is from the Old Testament, um, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The first chapter, I can't reread right now. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had been given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we join together in singing hymn number 393.
As we gather to hear from God's Word, I invite you to open a Bible to Matthew chapter 1. We're going to be looking at the gospel reading this morning of the birth of Jesus. And it's a story that all of you are probably very familiar with, right? And many of you probably have it memorized and can share all the details. But as I was preparing this week for this sermon, things changed in my life and things have probably changed in your life recently. And it got me thinking, um, how many of you typically make plans for Christmas? Not just Christmas Day, but like Christmas Eve, the holidays, you got plans all set up and you're ready to go. Some of you are like, I just let it happen, that's fine. All right, but a lot of times we make plans and we get very, very attached to those Christmas plants, correct? That this is how it's gonna be, these are things, and then eventually you do those plants enough and you get what's called traditions, right? Whether it's with your church or with your home family, whatever it might be. And when things don't go according to plan, guess what happens to you and me? We get upset, right? We get frustrated, we get sad, we get angry, we get annoyed, whatever adjective you want to throw out, <laughs> that's what happens when things don't go according to plan, especially when things around Christmas time don't go according to plan, right? They, they just frustrate us, they upset us, and they make us wonder like, oh, this is supposed to be a great time of year, this is supposed to be a wonderful season, why is all of this what feels like disaster happening to me or to my family or people that I love and care for. Um, on Monday of this past week, my stepdad, who he works for my home church, he oversees all the facilities and things like that. And he texted my brother and I to let us know, and he had pictures of it um, happening, that in the middle of the night, um, and luckily they were scared off, so it didn't happen, um, two pickup trucks pulled up all the way into the courtyard of my home church. So not like the parking lot, but like all the way into the courtyard area where they have a large 30-foot Christmas tree all decorated. And they have, when they, they do a devotional service around it, and it's really beautiful and everything. And they were trying to steal the Christmas tree from my church. All right, and uh, so it's like a real-life Grinch story. Now, thankfully, they didn't get away with it, but it kind of interrupted a lot of the Christmas plans <laughs> that my stepdad and church family back home had, all right? And so there's things like that where it's just, you just want to throw your hands up in the air and be like, really? Like, this is happening, right? You think like, okay, we're going to set up a tree at church. It's going to be nice and beautiful. And at least we're going to have that, right? No matter what else happens in the chaos world, we're going to at least have that. And then, of course, the world comes along and it's like, well, we're gonna to try to disrupt that dream, right? That reality. And then, for me personally, and maybe it affected you a little bit, I got COVID this past week, which was not like planned. I didn't put it on my calendar of like, how can I get out of Christmas Eve preaching? I had an awesome sermon written, by the way. You get it next year. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. All right. <laughs> Right? It happens, and then you're like, well, this isn't the way things are supposed to go. Like, what, what's going on here? Why? Right? There's things where we make plans, we have dreams or hopes for Christmas and the holiday season, and say, I, I want it to be like this, and, and if things happen that way, I'll have joy. There's things that I'm hoping for, and if they happen, I'll have peace, right? And so all kinds of things can happen to us that interrupt our Christmas plans, that make them not go the way we want them to. And if you are familiar with the story of Mary and Joseph and the first Christmas, here's the issue when we become too familiar with it, is we think, well, that's how it's supposed to go, right? Because if I got up here and read a different version of it, you probably would know that and get upset at me, right? Because we, we've heard this story so many times, we go, no, there's supposed to be shepherds out in the field, the angels show up, they sing a song to the shepherds, the shepherds go do their thing. Mary and Joseph were supposed to get married, but she has an angel visit her, he has an angel visit her, there's angels everywhere, right? And they're supposed to go to Bethlehem because of the census, and, and, and they're not supposed to find a room in the inn, right? Imagine if we did a Christmas pageant where like the first innkeeper is just like, yeah, come on in, we got, we got plenty of beds. How many of you would be upset? And you'd be like, no, that's not the way it's supposed to go, right? We get used to this is the story. This is how it happened. 
But if you're paying attention, and if you put yourself in the position of Mary and Joseph, and the sh- by the way, the shepherds did not have it on their work agenda that day, angel meeting, okay? Like, if you put yourself in their shoes, nobody's world, nobody's life, nobody's plans went the way they were supposed to go the first Christmas. And here's the good news. When, when it happens to you and me here and now, we're upset. It feels like bad news. We, we get frustrated. We get disappointed. Um, we get sad, whatever it might be. The good news for you and me, though, is that the first Christmas didn't go the way Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and everybody else thought it should, but it went exactly according to God's plan. And so in Matthew chapter 1, it says in verse 18, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. And then it goes into the story, right, that we know and love. And the angel visiting Joseph and Joseph being a good man. Now, here's the key verse, though. Okay, it happened this way. And we're like, oh, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to go. Remember what's happening. Joseph is wanting to do what? Divorce Mary, right? Never mind. I'm not going to marry her because that's not what is supposed to happen in his life. <laughs> He's like, no, this isn't real. And an angel shows up. He was not expecting an angel to show up to speak to her. Everything is chaos from the human perspective. Nothing is working out the way any of the human beings in this story are wanting it to work out. But here's the key verse I want you to hear. It's in verse um, 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Not just the very precious, we're gonna call him Emmanuel, and that means God with us, right? But what does Matthew say? All of this, right? I'm very fond of using the phrase, all y'all for you, right? Right, and you got, some of y'all are learning it, and you shout it back at me nowadays, and that's great. But he's not just saying this one little piece where we call his name Jesus, And we call his name Emmanuel, God with us, which is a very precious promise in of itself. Matthew's saying, no, all of this, the interruptions, the disruptions, the things not going according to human plans for Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds, and everybody else, he's saying all of that is happening that way in order to fulfill what the Lord had spoken. Another way of saying it, to fulfill what the Lord had promised. And what had the Lord promised way back in Isaiah, which is what Matthew is quoting and looking back towards, is that the Lord will give you a sign. In Isaiah 7, verse 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God is saying, look, I have a plan. It's different than yours. Not all of us get excited about that. On the one hand, we're like, yay, God's plans, right? On the other hand, <laughs> I like my plans. Sometimes I think my plans are better. And the way I think everything should line up and go is the best way. And you think that too. Don't lie to me in church. You know why I know you think that way? Because if you did it, you'd come up with a different plan. Right? <laughs> like, every time you come up with a plan or idea, you're like, this is the best one. Otherwise, what? You'd create alternatives. And so we wrestle with God, just like Joseph, of, I don't get it. I'm struggling with this. But God, in ages past, said, here is a promise that I'm giving to you, my people. Here's the sign that I'm going to be with you, that I'm going to come and rescue you and redeem you. A child will be born. So if you were to ask Mary and Joseph, hey, is everything going the way you planned it out? The whole getting engaged and and when you're gonna get married and, and where you're gonna raise your kids? They weren't thinking Bethlehem, okay, right? And they would have said, absolutely not. Joseph had to have an angel convince him to go through with the wedding, 
right? And Mary had to have angels visit her to comfort her. She had to go and stay with her cousin Elizabeth to be guarded and protected because probably everybody else was like, Joseph was like, this is not accurate. This is not the way things go. And so their entire lives are disrupted and interrupted. Every plan they could have conceived of has been torn apart and destroyed. And that is probably the most relatable part of the Christmas story. It doesn't just happen around Christmas time where things that we are planning for or hoping for don't go our way. It happens throughout the year, right? And it happens throughout our whole lives. And part of the comfort, though, of the Christmas story is that, yes, you and I live in this world where we're a lot like Mary and Joseph, where things don't always go the way we were hoping or planning or even thinking they would go. But we also live in a world where God has made promises to us. We live in a world where God has made the ultimate promise of saying, I'm gonna be with you in all the chaos in and all the plans being interrupted and disrupted and things not going your way and, and you acting like Joseph and wrestling with God and wishing you had an angel visit in your dream just to clear some things up real quick, right? And the good news of Christmas is, yes, these things are all true. Not everything goes to plan. Not everything goes the way we hoped for in life. But according to God's plan, it is going according to plan. <laughs> And that's really good news when you and I are willing to trust him and put our faith in his plans above ours. And one of the reasons you and I can do that and say, oh, it will be worth it and he is worth trusting and he is, his plans are much better is the promise of Christmas. With Ahaz being asked, Right? In that Old Testament story, Ahaz is asked, I will give you a sign. Right? So many of us are like, Lord, just give me a sign. Tell me that I can trust in you, that you will take care of me. Because if you don't know the context, nothing was going right for Ahaz at the time. And Ahaz's problem is he didn't trust the Lord. He's like, right, I'm not going to test you. I'm not going to ask you for a sign. I'm not. And the Lord is like, fine, I'll do it myself. Here's your sign, that I am with you that I am here to redeem you and to be with you in all things. The virgin's gonna give birth to a son and his name's gonna be Emmanuel. So when Matthew chapter one, verse 22 says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. That's the good news of Christmas. That as much as there is chaos in our lives and Mary's life and Joseph's life and not everything goes the way we think it should, the ultimate comfort of Christmas is that God's plan is still good, God's promises are still kept, and that he is the God who keeps those promises, he's the God who makes the good plans, and he's the one over all things. And so when we are struggling, when Christmas is not going, perfectly as you imagined. There's still hope in the Christmas story itself, which is everything went according to God's plan. And his plan is much better than any plan you and I could ever come up with because his plan was not just good family time. His plan is not just everybody got along at the dinner. <laughs> Nobody said anything weird last night. We made it, right? God's plan is much bigger than all the right gifts were bought and given to each other. God's plan is to be with you and to be with me and to be with all people. So that, that sin no longer separates us or um, causes d d disruption in our relationship with him. Instead, his plan is, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to send a savior. So no matter what you and I face during the Christmas season and our plans going awry, no matter what comes in the new year, you and I have a solid foundation of hope found in Jesus Christ. Because as Matthew says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken, fulfill what the Lord had promised. So sometimes we don't see it. We don't understand God's view of things all the time. 
but the good news of why you and I can keep trusting him on Christmas Day and the next day and the next year is because Christmas did happen and did go according exactly to his plan. And the good news is that because it went according to his plan, he is the God who is with you and me in all things. He is the Savior who has come to redeem you and me. And he's the God who keeps all of his promises. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks that you indeed came to be our Savior, to be the reminder that God himself is with us in all the ups and downs of life, that you are the ultimate gift to us, the ultimate reminder that God, you are for us, that you love us and you redeem us. May we trust in your good promises and your good plans on Christmas day and every day. In your name we pray, amen. I invite you to stand as we go to our God in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, scripture teaches us that every good and perfect gift comes to us through your hands. We thank and praise you for all the ways that you've provided for us throughout this year. We ask, Lord, that you would use those of us whom you have blessed to bless others so that they may know your mercy and kindness. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in need of daily bread, Lord, that you would continue to provide for them and meet their physical needs so that they would know your love. Lord Jesus, you are the greatest gift we could ever receive. We thank and praise you on this day for the gift of your birth, of you coming to be Emmanuel, God with us in our brokenness and our sin, and more than that, to be the God who redeems us from all those things. Lord Jesus, you are the great healer and great physician. We pray for all those who are sick and ill and all those who are in need of your healing hand and comfort, that you would lift up their spirits and bring healing to their bodies so that they may continue to worship and praise you. Holy Spirit, you are the counselor. We ask that you would give wisdom to all who are struggling to understand the plans of God, that you would also give us faith to trust in those promises and plans when we cannot see the picture fully. Holy Spirit, you are also the great comforter. We ask that you would comfort all hearts and minds that are in need of peace, and that you would give to all a peace that goes beyond all understanding because it is found in the love of Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in your name, Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue our worship with our tithes and offerings. <clears throat>
Please stand for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood, as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he gave given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he gave given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
I to stand and receive the communion blessing. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve your faith to life everlasting. Amen. We join together in singing, Create in Me.
We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a couple announcements. One is uh, there's no adult Bible class this morning. Sorry, I don't have <laughs> the lung capacity to do that uh, this morning. <clears throat> uh, the second is I want to say thank you and have a congregation say thank you to all of our choir and handbell choir and three scholarly musicians throughout this Christmas season. So thank you for all the ways they bless our worship. I also want to say thank you to uh, Lou Wetzel and Luke Allen for uh, taking over the service last night and doing the liturgy and bless Lou for reading my notes <laughs> uh, out loud for you, but thank you to both of them for serving our congregation in that way. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.